Hey everyone and welcome back. In this video we'll be taking a look at U functions and again what they are, what they do and how we can use them. U functions are very similar to the U properties that we've looked at in that they provide us some control over how functions that we declare in our C++ classes then behave in their blueprint counterparts. For this example I'll be using a pre-filled example actor class to save a little bit of time but again you can pause and follow along with the implementation if you wanted. To begin, we'll look at the basics of exposing a function to a blueprint, and we do that by using the U function declaration above the function that you'd like to expose. Here then we can see some of the most common examples of the U function specifiers, and they are the blueprint pure and blueprint callable. Now these expect us to have defined and implemented the logic in our C++ function, and these specifiers will allow us to simply call the function in the blueprint. So I've kept the implementation here very simple so that we can easily see what's happening and test these functions when they're called. And they're both just taking two integer values, adding them together, and then returning the sum total. So let's take a look in the Blueprint class to see the difference between the Blueprint callable and Blueprint pure. So in short, the callable function we have hooked up here provides the execution pin, similar to the standard functions that you might create in Blueprints whilst the pure specifier will not provide the execution pins and just return its single value. This isn't exactly the same, but would be similar to taking our blueprint created function and just ticking this pure function check. If I run this quickly as well, we can see that these are called on the begin play and using the logic that we saw in C++ code, and they'll be returning the values based on those two figures added together. So there are the callable and the pure specifiers. And one thing to note here about the blueprint pure is that they need to be a type rather than a void, as we can see here. So I've used an integer function return type, and that's to avoid what we can see back in the blueprint graph uh, with the pure function that I've defined here, where it neither has an input or an output and is therefore pretty much entirely useless. So in comparison, whereas the callable functions have the execution pins, you could use these as voids if you're required to do so. Just a quick note as well on the comments I've placed here above all of the functions. These are just snippets from the official U function documentation. And I figured that I'd include those just in case you're interested in seeing the official descriptions. So moving on to the next specifiers, we have two blueprint implementable events, one type void and one type bool. Blueprint implementable events are intended to be implemented fully in the blueprints, but this allows us to call the functions from the C++ class. And this is gonna be useful because just in case you're not aware, anything that we create or define in the derived blueprint class is not accessible to the parent class. So C++ classes, it doesn't have that back forward relationship. So the C++ parent class wouldn't know about any new variables or functions that you create in your blueprint class. So this is a way that we can get that back forward communication going just a little bit. The other important thing about these events is that because they're intended to be 100% implemented in blueprints, you don't define the function in the code file as you normally would and doing so will cause compile errors. Back in the begin play function, I have both of the implementable events called so that we can see them being called in our blueprint class. So I'll just quickly compile these changes and return to the blueprint editor. Now what we can see here is the first implementable event and notice that it's the one named event void to represent it being the void function type. Any implementable events which are of type void will always show in the blueprint class as an event, not a function. So in this case, the logic will need to all be placed in the event graph. In comparison, the implementable event boolean type is turned into a function in the blueprint. So you'll find this under the functions options, and then we'll have the option to override it here, which we'll need to do to implement our own blueprint logic. Knowing this can be pretty useful as it's much easier to maintain blueprint code when things are nested in their own functions rather than scattered through the event graph. So I just wanted to point those two differences out as well. So if we press play now, keeping in mind that we haven't called these functions anywhere in the blueprint, we'll see them being called from our C++ on the begin play. And the final specifier that we'll want to cover here is the blueprint native event. This would be the midground between what we've been looking at as this allows us to implement some C++ code and then also call and override this in our blueprint class. So these have a slightly different implementation in the code file. You define them in the same way as you would any other function, but this time after the class reference, you define the name of the function followed by underscore implementation. You then place your function logic in the function as usual. In this example, 
I'm going to use a standard Unreal log, which we can see in the output log. And we'll move over to the Blueprint class to extend this. So here's our native event, and I'll just create a new print string so that we can see it being called in both the Blueprint and the C++ class. And then just very quickly, one final thing to finish this off is that we'll need to return to our code file and call the function. And I wanted to keep this kind of separate to kind of make a point of this step as it can be the uh, the part that trips people up. So even though we have the native event underscore implementation in the code below, we actually call the native event when running the function, not the underscore implementation version. As you can see, I've just done here in the begin play. So if all of that compiled again, one thing that I forgot to do earlier was in the blueprint class, and this is similar to any other time that you've overridden a base function implementation. We need to add a call to the parent function as well. So if we didn't add that, we'd be skipping the C++ implementation and we'd only run the blueprint logic. Just for readability, I have hidden the rest of the output log. So I've searched for the word native, and I, as I know that's being called in both of the, uh, the print examples. So this will be a little bit easier to debug when we press play. And with that, you can see, here we go. We can see the yellow log is from our C++ class and the white log is from our blueprint print string. So there are some of the basics of the U function specifiers and how we can use them. As always, if you enjoy the videos or find these useful, then please do leave a like and share the video around. That really helps and is greatly appreciated. Also consider subscribing to make sure that you don't miss any new video uploads as I release at least one video per week with some potential extra videos midweek. Just wanted to say a really big thank you to all of my Patreon supporters. As always, it's your help that is continuing to support these videos. And if you wanted to show your support, do consider checking the link for my Patreon down in the description below. Another thing to mention at the end of this video, sorry, is that I've just opened a public Discord server. Again, links for that will be in the description below. If you wanted to join, come join the community, help each other out and share some code, game dev and some cool stuff. I will leave that video here now though. So as ever, thanks for watching and I will see you all next time.